Hi, everybody. Joe Chaffee here. Happy Father's Day. Weather in five, five days and five minutes brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware at 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, New York. Take advantage of the nice weather to make sure your yard looks great. Get your truck down there to get all the mulch, topsoil, and sand you need. 631-756-1125, the phone number, the website, omnitruevalue.com. And we've got Tempest by Weatherflow. Get the revolutionary Tempest weather system. Join the fastest growing weather network on the planet. Uh, if you use uh, the coupon code Joe and Joe Weather Show, you will get 10% uh, off on your first purchase. And you can find the referral link on the descriptor to this video. So let's uh, look at a couple of things first. Uh, the smoke is uh, the first issue of the day. And this is a website, uh, fire.arrownow.gov. And you can go to any city, on any of these circles here, and you can find out exactly what the uh, conditions are at that particular place. The AIQ, this is in Flemington, New Jersey. I just pulled it up at random. The AIQ right now is at 48. At, that was as of 5 p.m. Eastern time, and that is... Pretty good. You go southwest of there and head toward Newark, Delaware, and uh, there we have a moderate AQI of 76. Anything, you start getting in numbers that are above 50 and 60, and then you start to deal with uh, conditions that might be a problem for some folks. The higher the number, uh, well, the bigger the problem. And if you look around Buffalo in these brown circles, for example, this is from uh, Tonawanda, New York. The AQI there is 149, and that's unhealthy for sensitive groups. So it's a very good website to have ha to look at when it comes to the fire and smoke, because we really are going to be dealing with this on and off for uh, the next week and probably beyond that, given what's been going on in Canada with the wildfires. And with respect to the for forecast, this is for the next 48 hours, and you can see around the country. Uh, Areas of light smoke, that's in the lightish brown. You get into some of these darker brown spots. Then you start to get to uh, higher amounts of smoke particles uh, per million. Uh, and uh, again, this, fi this is firesmoke.ca uh, slash forecasts. And you'll notice that the smoke basically comes and goes. So just depending on what the upper air winds are uh, and the plumes that are coming down. So again, this is firesmoke.ca. Now, the Hurricane Center is watching disturbed weather uh, in the tropical Atlantic, which is very unusual for this time of year. But you know what? It's there. A 90% chance that this will become a tropical depression in the next day or two. And as we check out the latest uh, satellite loop, uh, well, if it's moving, going to move, I don't know. Let's just take a look. Uh, this is actually a still image of it. Uh, you can see the uh, rather well-defined tropical wave that is out in the Atlantic uh, right in here. Right there you go. That's it. There's actually even another wave behind it, but it's the first wave that the Hurricane Center is focusing on. It's got that curvature. The showers and thunderstorms are becoming more concentrated. And I think it's quite possible that this could become a tropical depression or a tropical storm in the next day or two. No threat to any land area in the short term. And I'm going to be using the European model because I think it has a better idea. The GFS has been really kind of spinning stuff up and it's overdeveloped. It takes the system basically straight to the west. doesn't really do much with it. So it goes to the islands and then eventually it just gets into some hostile wind conditions and winds up falling apart. And I, and I think in spite of what some of the other models might be showing, I think this is the one that probably will wind up, this is the to me what the most likely outcome is when it comes to uh, this tropical system. Meanwhile, tonight, uh, we've got uh, some active weather going on uh, in parts of the Gulf states. You see showers and thunderstorms there, also in southern Georgia. Uh, there's some other thunderstorms back up into parts of Missouri and Illinois. Not a whole lot happening in the northeast and mid-Atlantic states, down into the coastal south Atlantic states, although there are a couple of odd thunderstorms in parts of South Carolina. The northeast being driven by this upper air and surface low that's in the go between the Gulf of uh, between the coast of Maine and Nova Scotia so we're getting a flow again from the north it's not a flow that's conducive to hot weather uh, in the northeast and mid-atlantic states and, and that's pretty much where we're going to be uh, as we uh, head through this coming week here's a close-up view 
of the uh, satellite loop. And uh, again, just some patchy clouds around uh, that uh, are moving from west to east. There are a couple of uh, higher cloud tops that are showing up there to the northwest. As we check out the radar, though, they're not really doing very much. Radar is very, very quiet uh, up and down the eastern seaboard. You start to get into Florida, off the Florida east coast. You see some showers and storms down there in Georgia. A bunch of special marine warnings up uh, in and around New Orleans. We have some heavier thunderstorms moving through the upper Midwest and also through the middle Mississippi Valley uh, around St. Louis. There's an odd tornado warning that, that's popped up in northeastern Arkansas. The Storm Prediction Center. Uh, as far as severe weather is concerned, uh, for tonight has an enhanced risk of severe weather from uh, Louisiana east across uh, much of Mississippi and into Alabama, also with the southeastern Arkansas. A marginal risk that surrounds that extends to uh, South Georgia and covers Florida and back over into uh, Texas. Uh, the uh, tornado risk tonight as we take a look is on the order of 5% in that enhanced risk area in Mississippi. So that's something certainly uh, for those you folks there to be paying attention to. Also a 2% tornado risk in central Florida. Now for tomorrow, we're looking at marginal to slight risk in the southeast, particularly southern Georgia, the panhandle of Florida, and much of north Florida, southern Alabama, uh, southernmost Mississippi and southeast Louisiana. Also an area of marginal risk back in central Texas and also up in eastern Montana into North Dakota. A little bit of a of general thunderstorm activity moving up the Appalachians and on up into uh, upstate New York for tomorrow. Same for Tuesday, where we have marginal risk along the Gulf Coast and marginal risk in the Dakotas. Not much rain in the Northeast, I, I think, uh, but eventually we will get into some rain uh, next weekend. And here we're looking at a half to three quarters of an inch from the northern mid-Atlantic states up into New England. But very robust rainfalls from southern Virginia down to Florida, where we're looking at many areas. Uh, that orange area is at least five inches of rain from northeast Georgia up through the uh, the Appalachians and the Car in the Carolinas and in southwestern Virginia. Also along the Florida Panhandle, we've got a patch there of 7 to 10 inches touching the immediate coast and several inches going all the way down to South Florida. Also some big rains for the central to northern plains, an inch and a half to as much as two and a half inches being indicated there. And that extends up uh, into the northern Rockies. So again, much of this week to me looks to be on the dry side. Um, not really uh, too worried about anything other than the odd shower or thunderstorm. Uh, we'll be seeing temperatures that are going to be mainly in the 70s along the coast. And uh, depending on the day, it could get into the lower 80s inland. Uh, the flow is going to go onshore by the time we get to Tuesday. So tomorrow looks okay. The odd shower or thunderstorm well into inland in upstate New York and New England and also in the Appalachians. You see low pressure there in Tennessee. All of that being suppressed south southward thanks to strong high pressure from Lake Superior up to New Brunswick. And this is where we start to get the winds coming in from the east. And that's going to hold temperatures down Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, maybe even into Friday. Uh, that high is going to hold on all week. I think each day probably no worse than partly sunny. And we'll start to get into by starting Wednesday. I think we're going to start to see where it's cloudy in the late night and morning hours. And then you wait to see what burns off as we go through the day. Better chance it burns off inland and goes partly sunny than along the coast. And then eventually, uh, at the end of the week, you start to see that southern moisture begin to slowly creep up the coast. And I think that's going to probably mean for some wet weather uh, next uh, Saturday and next Sunday with uh, downpours and maybe some thunderstorms in the, re in the mix Looks like we may have a stalled frontal boundary setting up right along the East Coast. But again, the weather for much of this week in the eastern part of the United States does look to be dry. Meanwhile, just to show you, again, all that rain in the southeast and also some substantial rains in the central and northern plains, uh, which is uh, good news because some areas here in the central plains still uh, remain pretty much on the dry side. The Joe and Joe Weather Show will be back tomorrow night, Monday, at 7.35 p.m. We hope to see you then. Hope you're having a great Father's Day, you dads out there, and everybody else. A great holiday weekend. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7.35.